Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the Cyber Guy. Dave Stevens, I teach at the University of Hawaii, Kapi'olani Community College. I'm here to bring you the latest news and events in the world of cybersecurity. And we're gonna discuss some stuff in the tech support field today with the Chief Technology Officer from Hawaii Tech Support, Tim Ames. Welcome, brother. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me back. Did I pronounce it right, Ames? You did. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, I have trouble with the English names. I I'm kidding. If, 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 you know, if I'm in Mexico, it's Amez, though. You Amez, know, I gotta, gotta yeah, right. Win in Rome. Win in Rome, yeah. just go, go with that. Wow, so first of all, uh, you haven't been on the show for a little while, so tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, how you came to Hawaii, sure. and how you got to Hawaii Tech Support. Yeah, so um, I'm the Chief Technology Officer over at Hawaii Tech Support. We're a managed uh, service provider. So we help out with uh, mostly the small and medium-sized businesses in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, some of the uh, larger uh, organizations as well. We, we are their one-stop IT shop. So if uh, they might be too small to have a full IT staff, what we do is we uh, come in there and we, we're their virtual CIO. And uh, we, we provide help desk support, tier two, tier three, you know, the escalation and uh, the architecture for their, their enterprises. But how'd you come to Hawaii? I came to Hawaii uh, after getting out of the military. So I was active duty Marine Corps for about 10 years. Semper Fi. Semper Fi. Right on. And uh, <laughs> I, I got offered a job uh, with a civilian contractor for the DOD. And they, they asked if I wanted to go to San Diego, Hawaii, or Japan. I just spent the last five years well, in three Japan. Three good choices, though. Those are really good choices. <laughs> I grew up in Southern California. Right. Lived for five years in Japan. and. Uh, I'd only stopped over in Hawaii, like on uh, deployments. So you took a shot. I took a shot. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it paid off. You know, I met my wife over here. We have uh, two lovely girls, and uh, this job. is this is where I'm gonna gonna stay. So you're local now. I am. All right, you're one of the kind. Married in. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm counting on you. Yeah. So it's a best best case scenario to take the talent and motivation from the military services, the the motivated, and uh, intelligent and and educated people that come out of the military to keep them here on the islands. I really like that. And yeah. I'd like to do that for our students, too. They, you know, they're attracted to the mainland, but I'd like to bring them back and get that experience back here in the islands. They are. It's, it's not a bad thing to go off and get the experience um, from other organizations, yeah. whether it's here on the island or if it's uh, on the mainland, or even go to another country, find out how they do it, and bring it back. I like that. Yeah. Uh, most people forget, uh, in, especially in information technology, it's uh, amazingly critical that you do change jobs every once in a while, maybe every two to five years, to get the experience from multiple organizations and mm -hmm. to come back and, and bring that experience and knowledge and know-how into a new company here in the islands. Well, we were talking about that before the show. We were talking about how uh, people can get really uh, pigeonholed into their, you know, their specialty. So oh. a programmer might not know the networking, might not know the security, but yeah, that job rotation really helps you, well, helps you, you expand. Know, we're going to discuss what we talked about before the show. I'll give my example. Uh, when I was real young and I was just getting into computers, I started just programming, you know, Perl scripting, stuff like that. Uh, really old school, some VB, uh, VB4. <laughs> I mean, it was way old school. And uh, I didn't know anything about networking until I bought a game that had to do, you know, multiple players and I had a router. And uh, I had to read the instructions and, hey, I need some port forwarding. So, wow, what is this networking stuff so right. I had to learn networking and like oh that's what this stuff is uh, but I wouldn't have known you're right if you just do this job and you're terrific at that job mm -hmm. you might not realize that there's more of the world out there besides uh, you and I are also saying that uh, you know like you go back to 80s and 90s even mm -hmm. the beginning of the 2000s you could be the IT guy. Right, yeah. You can't do that the anymore. The field is way too deep now. There's, yeah, this, yeah it used to be a mile wide and an inch deep Right, mm -hmm. and now it's just a mile wide and a couple hundred <laughs> meters deep. Right. I mean, it gets yeah. very deep. Uh, I like the fact that you guys can take a lot of that uh, critical uh, service infrastructure, uh, the responsibility, the know-how, um, and and the the efficiency, and take that responsibility away from the business, and they just pay a fee, and they don't have to think about it because a lot of people, me included, I had a business, I still do. Uh, sometimes I don't have the resources and the time to dedicate to that kind of stuff, because I got a business to run. You're running a business. Your yeah. business is to make money, and uh, IT is a tool for that business. And a lot of people, um, a lot of people get carried away with the IT, right? They, they might want to go for too much, or they might not go for enough. And uh, I, think, I think finding a, a professional like yourself, or, 
or Hawaii Tech Support to kind of give that advice, you know, where, where do I need to be as an organization? It's wonderful to have you guys yeah. out there. So if I, if I need legal advice, I'm not going to do it. Right. I'm not going to go out and get yeah. a degree. I'm going to go out and hire, outsource some legal. If I need uh, HR, mm -hmm. I do not even pretend to know everything about human resources. Right. So I'm going to go out and hire, you know, Pro Service Hawaii or mm -hmm. something, you know, an HR company. And when I need tech support, I'm going to go to the pros. Right. And you guys are probably going to say, let's see, you're in elementary school. Do you really need 24-7 support? Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know, work hours, a couple of weekend days, you're not even 365 days a year. Yeah. You know, you can model your support infrastructure or your support service to them, to yes. that business, right? Yeah. And if I went out and hired as an elementary school, I go out and hire an IT guy. First of all, he's overworked because he's got to handle everything. Right. And he's on salary, so he's 24-7. Yeah. And I don't need that. And you're paying for the health and benefits uh, and all that. Yeah, yeah the 401k that. The, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah so undefinable. It's, a, it's a great match to, to dig you guys up yeah, I appreciate and you that. guys that. And then you guys can come and say, well, based on other people we've served in the same industry, mm -hmm. we think that you could use this service mm -hmm. to reduce the time and effectiveness that you know, you're using over here, or you could use this service and this might save you a little money. Yeah. That kind of advice is invaluable to somebody who's, like you said, just running a business. I yeah. own a 7-Eleven. I run a gas station. I, I own a, I don't know, I run a public swimming pool, whatever it is. And you guys can say, we'll channel this and meet your needs. Do you have any stories like that? Yeah, so, um, well, lately we've been, uh, so it's, it's about defining resources that you mm. need, right? So we have the resources to just sit there and uh, do proofs of concept on new technology. We have, we have the resources to sit there and read all of the the bulletins that come out, you know, concerning cybersecurity, or just you know, better ways of architecting uh, new and improvement, new new improvements to uh, the IT community. Uh, some of the newer stuff that's coming out, like cloud computing, that's that's been really. Uh, I think that's we can take a lot of advantage of the cloud computing uh, resources that are available. So now, as as people are retiring their servers, I'm looking at that. You know, we're looking at that from a from an organizational perspective and saying, do you really need to invest, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in a new data center, or would you rather move that uh, organization to the cloud? You know, the cloud computing uh, platforms like Microsoft Azure, Google. Uh, well, let's talk to Amazon the people in the services. cheap seats really quick yeah. and bring them up to speed because there's some people, that, some viewers that really don't understand what cloud computing is. Cloud okay. is this mysterious, ethereal thing. You know, explain I, it to us. It bothered me so much when everybody was talking <laughs> about cloud computing. Uh, I think one of the original cloud computing was Rackspace. Okay, and what this oh, is, one of the pioneers. One of the sure. pioneers, right? So what it is is instead of having a data center inside of your organization, you know, where you have to provide air conditioning, you have to provide. Uh, conditioned power, fire you have suppression, to, fire suppression, Security. yeah, UPS, yeah. all that kind of stuff to keep everything up and running. Instead of doing that, you know, Microsoft or Amazon, they have these huge data centers and they carve you out a little piece of it. You know, it's 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 a logical piece of their data center, and they assign it to you. And from a management perspective, it looks and runs just about the same. And it can be redundant invisibly. Absolutely. So you're looking at a piece of it, but that's actually backed up in real time to another place. Mm -hmm. So if one of them goes down, you still got the other one. Right. Really, all the requirement is for you is to have a good internet connection. Yes, and that is key. That, that's the critical component that we look at now. And Hawaii can be hit or miss, you know, depending on where you go on the island. <laughs> you may get the fiber, yeah. you may get, you know, you may have to... The old copper cabling or the You might have to DSL. go to some of the guys that provide, like, the line of sight, you know, the, the antennas. Oh, the microwave dish. Yeah, the microwave yeah. antennas. Mm -hmm. um, so that happens. But we, we try and get our, uh, our customers to... It, it, this is another thing. So you were talking about cost savings. I... Uh, I encourage all of your viewers right now to uh, to take a look, you know, get in contact with their ISP, their vendor for their, you know, internet connectivity, and just check if you haven't spoken to them in the last couple of years, oh. you might be able to to get a better deal, double or triple your internet speed right, right. now. Hawaii Telecom is going to hate me in Spectrum. They're, no, they're, they're, they're the same speed, they want, oh, they want, same price, right? Yeah I, yeah, I think they want us to move over to that new architecture. You know, they're building out all this new infrastructure. Move to it. So yeah, double your speed up. If you don't have to pay anything more, I mean, it's, it's a, just an easy win, right? Low-hanging fruit. Once you have that speed, though, the cloud becomes, it just, you can do remote desktop to the cloud. So we've been giving people thin clients uh, that don't have any operating system on it. To Describe a thin client. Right. Back to the cheap seats. Mm -hmm. What's a thin client? A thin client is a computer that connects directly to a remote uh, session, okay? So 
usually you log into your computer and all your data is stored on that computer. Okay, a lot of people are familiar with file shares. Uh, file shares usually reside on a server, right? So you access the file shares from your computer, but when you download that, it, it gets stored on your computer. And you have an operating system like Windows 10 or you know, uh, Mac OS, you have an operating system on that computer. That's what we consider a thick client or just a normal workstation, a normal PC. What a thin client does is it runs a little bit of an operating system, just a little operating system kernel, but it actually boots into, it, it starts up a session with a remote server that has your desktop that you're you know, used to seeing when you log in. So it maintains all your shortcuts, your links, your your uh, share folders and all that, your, your printers even. You know, you so can, you wouldn't see the difference really as a user. There's a little bit of a difference, but I think from a, from a user's perspective, no. If, if you're already used to uh, using a computer, it, it's going to look the same. The difference is, I think, w when it comes to graphics. So you're not going to be wanting to uh, stream videos across this connection. Oh, yeah. You don't right. want to sit there on YouTube all day. Yeah. yeah. Now, there are, um, there are specific uh, processors and with uh, graphics process, you know, that you can buy in the cloud. They're, they're yeah. kind of prohibitively expensive you know, to, to do that kind of stuff if that's not your job, if you're not a... Uh, if you're not inside of some computer-aided design, you know, if you're not an engineering company that needs that. Uh, but everything else runs fine. So email, internet connectivity. When you go to uh, these cloud uh, services too, like Amazon or, or uh, Microsoft, and you set up your cloud environment, when you're logged in and it looks like you're just logged in in your own computer, you go do a speed test, do an internet speed test from one of Microsoft's uh, data centers, and you're getting gigs downloaded from the internet. So, I mean, that, that's just a beauty right there. The, the speed and the, you're, you're, you're in a premier data center. And yeah. we, have, we have a data center here, data, uh, DR Fortress. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, local company? Local company, yeah. yeah. And they offer cloud services now, too. So, my, my wife used to work for Citibank for a while as a contractor, and they did this extremely well. Okay. So, the, the thing I, I, I thought was a tremendous bonus to Citibank is that every person could log in, but their computer is is hosted and managed, the OS is hosted and managed and secured right. remotely. Yep. So all she had to do was have a VPN connection, a desktop computer, and an internet connection. Yes. And all the other software that Citibank needed her to have is on that image. And if anything goes wrong with it, Citibank can manage it from right where they are. Right. They don't need to log into a computer. That doesn't need to be a remote session. Mm -hmm. They don't need to come to the house and secure it physically. She's secured just by that VPN connection and everything else is handled on their side. Right, and when you have to patch a computer, when a new virus comes out, a new update comes out. It's and immediate. You, instead of patching 100 computers, you patch one. And it just propagates. Yep. Yeah, and it's wonderful. I think this is a great idea and it can save a lot of money. Um, what's the, how much money would I save? Say if I if you're my user and I have a Dell computer on your desk and I have to manage your Office 365 subscription mm -hmm. and your Windows license and your Adobe license for like an Acrobat um, versus I'm going to host this off site and do the thin client. Would I save 10 percent, 20 percent? Well, there, or is it there's all about savings there. Yeah. So uh, with the subscription type services like Office 365 or Adobe's gone to a subs subscription service also with Creative Cloud. Yeah, I have that. I love right. it. Right. I yeah. love it too. Um, so yeah, there's there's opportunities to load that on one uh, server. You're going to pay a different subscription model than you're normally used to paying. Where the big savings cost savings come up with is uh, network refreshes. So like computer refreshes or the electricity, the air conditioning. You also get something, you remember as cybersecurity professionals, we're always interested in the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of our uh, information resources. I think that's the biggest value right there, is the availability. It's always on. You know, Microsoft's data center, the, we, we use the West US 2 data center as our primary data center. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be on. But even if it's, it, the worst case scenario, Microsoft's data center goes down, it pops up in the West data center. Or so you're Coast always on, always no matter on. what's going on at Microsoft, Right. they have a redundancy, they have redundancy to keep built you in. up. And we're gonna talk about that, we're gonna take a little bit yeah. of a break, and when we come back, let's talk about worst case scenarios mm -hmm. and what's gonna help your business. So the disaster resistant technologies that we can employ as business people to keep us secure and keep us going. So business continuity, the availability you're talking about. Okay. So okay, we'll come right back. All right. Until then everybody, stay safe.
Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave, the Cyber Guy, and we're talking with Tim Ames, the CTO of Hawaii Tech Support, and now we're going to get into disaster-resistant technologies. Tim, let us have it. I'm a business person, I need my technology on all the time. That's part of what we call business continuity. Right. I have people, backups to me and a backup to that person, and I need to do that with technology too. Now out here in the, on the Pacific, we're in the middle of a hurricane season. Mm -hmm. We just had one coming by, this is Hurricane Lane, uh, came right up to Oahu, kissed it on the cheek and moved on. Dead. But it just devastated the the Big Island. Yeah, Hawaii. brothers and sisters over in uh, Hawaii got hit hard. Almost four feet of rain in some places, yeah. right? So let's talk about. I'm running a business like uh, on the Big Island. Hurricane passes through and just dumps the biblical floods on me. But I need to be up and running as soon as that stops. But if I have a data center, most likely it flooded. Right, right, yeah. So we're looking at this from a business perspective and then an IT and security perspective. Let's do both. All right, so the business perspective, the business requirement is to have a business continuity plan. So the business continuity plan is where the managers, the, the executive team gets together and decides what services do we need up to maintain our business? How quick do we need to be uh, recovered from any kind of disaster? And how long can we be down? Or in, when we do recovery, when we do our recovery, what is our recovery point objective? So you want to keep the doors open. So an example would be Amazon.com. It goes down for an hour. How much right. money have you lost? Millions. Millions, yeah. Right? If I'm a department store, i got to close my doors. If I stay with the doors closed, every day after the hurricane goes away that I'm not open for business, You're losing I'm, money. I'm just losing money. Especially in during a disaster, if, if you are one of those stores, one of those retail shops that has stuff that people need you know, to recover you from the disaster, right you want to open up right yeah. now. And you, right now. And you don't want to go back to hand jamming it on paper because <laughs> you're going to lose something. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so what we recommend on that is to, to just double down on, on your, uh, your availability. It's called high availability. And the, the first part you can get high availability on is your actual access to the internet. Now, if, if your organization has the ability to go to two different service providers, like for example, use Spectrum and Hawaii Telecom. If Hawaii Telecom goes down, and this could happen just during a normal business day, right? You can sure. lose your ISP. Well, then your other, your other uh, connection stays up. Technology is advanced to the point, though, where you don't have to pay for two circuits uh, to run constantly, and, and maybe you're not using both circuits at the same time. You're not load balancing. You just have one just in case. Uh, there's actually appliances now that you can use your ISP, like you know one of your vendors here locally, and then you can have a SIM card that goes in there. And so when you lose that connect connection to your local ISP, the SIM card kicks in, and now you're on the LTE network. Okay, it's you set up the security. It's still a firewall and it's still doing all of its work, doing the inspection, uh, but you're up. So you know that's one big way to t it tackle that challenge uh, from the get-go. Having redundant power is important too. And so having everything on a UPS, making sure that you, uh, you know, if the storm's incoming and 
and you're not rated, your, your UPS isn't rated to, to handle any kind of like lightning. You Got know. to define yeah. this, uninterruptible power supply. Uninterruptible power supply. UPS. I'm sorry, I, no, I, I okay. tend to use acronyms. We got people in the cheap seats. We got, I know. We got to play to the whole audience. So the uninterruptible <laughs> power supply, uh, people should be aware of this, is it's just a big battery. So you plug all of your devices into that. If the battery loses power from the wall, your devices are still going to be up and running. For your a servers, certain amount of time. For a certain yeah. amount of time. At least enough time to uh, hopefully get the power back or switch to a generator. Safely shut or down. Or safely shut down. Right. Right. Uh, oh, but if you want we got to pause here. Yeah. UPS is, the batteries don't last forever. They don't last forever. Every five years or so, go in there, test your batteries, Absolutely. switch them out. Um, yeah. Especially in Hawaii, high humidity, bad mm -hmm. Bad stuff for batteries. They can explode. Yep. They can burst. Uh, they're going to get all that fuzz on the outside. Yeah, these are the lead acid batteries. So you want you want to dispose of them uh, with the with like battery bills. I'll give them a free plug. <laughs> we get, we take a lot of our batteries to there, and and they're great at uh, disposing of them properly. They don't go in the landfill. Okay, battery bill, everybody. That's a local <laughs> vendor. Just so you know, <laughs> battery bill. Look up his commercials. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. 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 So you have a UPS. Um, a redundant internet connection, hopefully. Right. Um, what else? Well, n then you want to look at, okay, what do I do for backups? And backups is a question that you have to ask all the time now. Because we're not just thinking about disasters, we're thinking about ransomware. Ransomware, so ransomware. we're into cybersecurity finally, right. on the cyber underground. So yeah, ransomware can terminate your, your data by yes. just locking it up, and if you don't pay the ransom, you don't get the key to decrypt yeah. it. And even if you do pay, sometimes you don't get the key. In fact, right. I think it's only 30% of the time you get the key to unlock your data. Uh, additionally, there's uh, ransomware out there now that I just read that will get into your backups. Goes for your backups, and yeah. And will just stay there and wait until you try to restore your backups, mm -hmm. and then it hits you again. Yeah. So this is, this is bad stuff. So backups, not only do you have to do them, you have to test them. And you have to make sure that, oh, testing, that's the key. And you have to make sure the technology <laughs> you're using doesn't, doesn't allow the uh, ransomware to kind of bridge that gap, right? Oh, yeah, you don't want it to jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people do their backups, and they just do them to a separate uh, computer on the network, hopefully, hopefully that if this computer goes down, this computer stays up. But they do it over a shared, a shared drive. And they leave it on. That, that, that connection, shared drive, yeah. that connection's on. So that <laughs> ransomware, now you got ransomed backups, too. We should, we should tell our audience, yeah. the, re the reason is if you have two computers that share a connection, and you're backing uh, up one to the other, if ransomware attacks the live one, it has a connection that it can use to get to your backup server and encrypt that data as well. So if you're making that backup, disconnect that share yes. after you're done making the backup mm -hmm. and make sure your backups are safe from the ransomware. Right. And then for, for your home users even, uh, you got uh, things like Carbonite. So Carbonite and iDrive, uh, those are both like technologies that they, they're cloud backup, they're cloud storage. Right. So uh, you just install an agent and it, it takes care of the backups for you. Uh, when, uh, Mac has Time Machine. And the, uh, yeah, there, there's just tons of, tons of good products out there. Uh, my, only, uh, my only recommendation is that you choose one. <laughs> Yeah, stick yeah, with it. Just, yeah. Just, just stick with, you know, get a backup solution. Um, but now for the businesses, though, they can start backing up to the cloud. So cloud storage is ridiculously cheap. That, you, you asked the question, you know, what, what, uh, what are the cost savings when you go to the cloud? Compute, memory, uh, those resources are pretty much on par with buying a, uh, a server uh, of your own. But when it comes to cloud storage, you can't buy any cheaper. There, there's no way I can beat uh, Microsoft or Amazon when it comes to just getting. Plus, storage. if I have another uh, go live point, like mm -hmm. if my if I'm in Hilo on the Big Island, uh, there's torrential rains coming down, yeah. but not much rain on the Kona side, and I have a an empty data center up there. I can just move everybody up there. You can and restore my data from the cloud. Yes, I don't need to go get it from the flooded office right. and bring it up and physically restore. Or you can spin it up in the cloud. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is you're not just backing, you, you don't just have the opportunity to back up to the cloud. Once that data is up there, there's, there's no problem just spinning it up as a computer. Let's describe that. So yeah. in the cloud, you have images of servers. Right. Right, so it, it, it's a virtual machine. Yes. And if you need more because there's more processing power, you can spin another one up, which means create another image of that and it replicates another computer with more processing power. Mm -hmm. Now you pay a few more pennies, but only for the time you need that more yes. power. So let, let's let's do an example. Amazon.com again, because I love picking on Jeff Bezos. Right. I love Jeff. I 
I order everything from you, Jeff. <laughs> Damn it. Um, <laughs> so convenient. So Amazon.com is running, and they have, uh, you know, what do they call it, Black Monday or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, Cyber, right, Cyber after, Monday. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, they're, they're going to go from having, you know, 100 servers to having uh, 10,000 right. servers running at the same time because they don't want anyone to have a bad experience. But when that is over, they scale back down. And yes. I think that's the key word we're looking for here. The scalability of the cloud is amazing. Right. So um, it, it used to be that if my business ramped up, I have to increase my data center footprint by, you know, an enormous yeah. amount and just put all these computers up there. But then if my business ever scales down, I'm stuck. You're right. I got all that stuff there. With the cloud, business scales back, okay, I scale back. Oh, it's back up? I scale right back up to meet my need. And my costs are, um, they're commiserate, uh, commensurate with the actual need. Right, the traffic right. that you're getting, the traffic right. that you're expecting. It, it, you, you mentioned spinning up other servers, and, and what's cool about uh, a lot of these options is that you can actually resize the server while it's running. So just I need like a big a, server, I need a small server. I need a, I just, yeah, I just need, uh, another 32 gigs of RAM on this server, and you just, with the flip of a button, you can you can do it while it's in production. And it's literally production. pennies yeah. I wouldn't do it do while this. it's in production, but yeah, you can. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we do have load balancing, and there, yeah. therefore you have multiple servers, so you can take some down and not interrupt And service. you can turn them off at night, too. So uh, <laughs> with, the, with the remote desktop hosts, for example, the, yeah. with the thin clients, uh, you might have 100 people working during the day, but you only have a skeleton crew working at night. You don't need three remote desktop servers up during the nighttime. You only need the one, and it might be the smallest one. You can set it up to every night shut down the other two. So you're saving over the long term. You're saving two thirds of your cost. Yes. Yeah. By only having you know all three of them up for maybe 20, ten or twelve hours a day. Right. You're cutting thirty or forty percent off your cost over the yeah. the year. And plus your P and Ls are going to look great at the end right. of the year. <laughs> yeah, and you just can't do that with a regular you know regular physical infrastructure. With our last minute of the show, uh, give us a little sales pitch about Hawaii Tech Support, exactly what you guys offer, sure. and how to get in touch with you guys, because well, I want to know. If anybody's interested in uh, some of these new cloud technologies and how to, how to make, your, uh, make your organization highly available, highly available and, you know, secure. During the storm, and secure yeah. during the storm season, uh, contact us, Hawaii Tech Support. Uh, our number is 808-535-9700, or you can email us at uh, learn at hawaiitechsupport.net. So H -I learn at hawaiitechsupport. That's H-I. H-I, like tech Hawaii. Support. Yeah, yeah. hawaiitechsupport.net. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you, Dave. And again, Semper Five, brother. Yeah, Semper right five. on. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Cyber Underground. We'll be back next week. Until then, stay safe.